Hello, and welcome to Ionic Push, the simple push notification service built for your Ionic apps. To get started, let's follow the official push documentation on the ionic.io docs. Let's follow the quick start guide so we can get up and running fast. First, we need to install the alpha version of the Ionic command line tool. This won't be required for long, but for now, the push features are available only in alpha. Next, let's start an app using the push starter template. Let's run Ionic, start my push app, and push. This will go and download the push starter template. Now that our app is created, let's upload it to Ionic.io, our API key. Let's open the text editor and go into that app that we just got created. Open www.js slash app.js. In this config call, where we're identifying our app with the Ionic app provider, we can replace our new app ID that we find in the dashboard. My push app, here's the app ID. And if we open the Ionic services dashboard, we can see our API keys. So we're going to use this API key. And the GCM ID we can configure later for Android. But that's the official Google ID that you get from the cloud console. OK, so we've configured our app ID. Let's go and install the platform support for iOS first. And this is the process that takes the most amount of time, unfortunately. To get up and running with iOS push notifications, we need to configure our certificates and also update our provisioning profiles and enable push notifications for our app. Let's start with generating the certificate request. We need to open the keychain access, open the certificate assistant, and request a certificate from a certificate authority. And we'll go save to disk and continue. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop. Great, our certificate request has been created. Now let's log into the Apple Developer Center to configure push notifications for our app ID. In the Apple Developer Center, we need to click Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles. We'll select Identifiers. and we'll create a new iOS app ID. We'll give it a random name, and then create an explicit app ID using reverse DNS notation. You should do your domain dot your app ID. And notice this is different than the Ionic app ID. This is just for Apple. Down here at the bottom, we'll enable push notifications, which we'll configure in a bit. Don't forget to hit submit down here on the next page. Now that our app ID is configured, let's enable push notifications for our app. This is the one that we just created. We'll go to edit down here. We'll go down to push notifications and configure our development push certificate. Now we need that certificate signing request that we generated in the first step. So let's find that and then upload it here. And then click Generate. Great, our certificate is ready, so let's download it. To add the certificate to our keychain, we can open it or double click in Finder. Great, we see it here. Now we need to export it. So right click and export and we're going to save it to the desktop. We shouldn't give it a password to protect it, but we will need to enter our password. Note, if you want to go into production, you'll need to do the same thing, but click production push SSL certificate instead of development. Now we need to generate a provisioning profile that has our 
New certificates and push notifications enabled. Even if you had a provisioning profile already, you'll need to generate a new one. So let's go to development. Let's click new provisioning profile. We're going to select iOS app development and hit continue. Find your app ID in the list. It's already selected ours. Select the certificate. Select devices. I'll do all devices. And then we'll give it a profile name. And click generate. Great, our provisioning profile is ready. Let's download it. And to use this, we will open it. Now to add this provisioning profile to our app, we will go back to the command line into our Ionic app and type Ionic platform add iOS to install the iOS SDK. Once that's done, we can go and open the iOS project in Xcode. Then we should edit the config.xml file to set the app ID to the one that we entered in Apple in the iOS Developer Center. Save, and we can run Ionic Build iOS to update the iOS project. Great. Great. We should check in the app that the bundle identifier is set to the one that we entered online. Sometimes you need to delete it after doing a build to make it update, but that's the correct one. And we'll make sure that our team is set to the right team for the provisioning profile that we have. Now we can go and open the provisioning profile, and it'll open in Xcode. Okay, one thing we need to do before we test our app is actually send our iOS development certificate to the Ionic server. So we're going to go and use this ionic push command and then specify the location of the exported certificate from the last step. Let's try running our app to see what it looks like. We're just going to use the simulator to start. Great, we should see the ionic push starter with information on how we can use the service. The way the Ionic push service works is it takes a user that we've identified in our app and associates it with device tokens. This way we can have a user ID device token pair so we know how to target individual devices. It's not that useful just to store device tokens because you don't know who is using the app, so you have no way to target that push notification. You'll end up just having to send push notifications to every device that you have registered and that's not a good idea. So the first thing you do is you want to identify a user in your system. You can generate a GUID uh, for the user if you want, or pass in the user ID from your application. You'll often do this after the user logs in, for example. Once they've logged in, you can trigger a register call. This registers the app for push notifications and also sends the device token to the Ionic services, which will then either send you a webhook or store the device token on our service for the upcoming dashboard. Now, you can't test push notifications in the simulator, unfortunately. You have to test on the device. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to be testing on the device, but walking you through things that you need to do to make it work. So let's close the simulator. Great, my app launched, and I see the same UI that I just saw in the simulator. So I'm going to tap Identify, just to do a test identify, and then Test Register. And you'll notice there's command line output down here. So I just got the push notification prompt, so I'm going to hit allow or OK. OK, so we can try testing the push service by using ionic push dash dash send. We'll put in our API key from the dashboard. Use the secret private API key to send. It's an authorized endpoint. 
and the device token that we want to send to. You can get the device token by either looking on the app itself, it'll be printed down at the bottom, or uh, open up Safari and use the web inspector to grab it, or it'll be sent to your webhook, which you can optionally configure. And we're gonna say, hello world. And we'll set a badge count to 10. Great, if we look at the app, we should see that we got a push uh, with an alert field, a badge field, and a sound field, and foreground field. Uh, that's for debugging. Um, when you're actually testing this, you'll see that uh, if you're not in the app, you'll get an alert in iOS. Otherwise, it's up to you to handle that inside the app. Great, that's all for setting up push notifications with ionic.io and iOS. Thank you.